welcome to the learners today we are going to discuss an important subject called the important definitions provided under the consumer protection act 2019 if you compare with the consumer protection act 1986 with the consumer protection act 2019 the 1986 act had only 23 definitions whereas the 2019 act uh, say double the definition to 47 definitions so uh, it's not possible to cover all the definition in this 30 minutes discussion however i will select those de- definition which are very important and commonly uh, and frequently uh, used by the people concerned those definitions alone will be uh, will be taking uh, the consideration for other definition you may please please refer to our study material either received by post or of that's hard copy or you can refer to our we can go to our um, egan post portal for uh, viewing this uh, material is concern now let us uh, go straight away to the what are the important definitions one of the important definition is the advertisement which is provided under section 21 of the consumer protection act 2019 now advertise before we go to the definition what, what is what for the advertisement is meant generally the advertisement is meant for either for promoting the sale of the goods or hiring the services that's what the primary uh, purpose is concerned and the, the, the advertisement may be of different kind different nature it may be by way of audio your short film or very often we see in the tvs a 10 seconds let us uh, say advertisement shown for each and every product is concerned and it is repeatedly shown also so what is the purpose of advertisement is to create an interest in the minds of the people to purchase that particular commodity or the hiring of the services concerned or to in a way indirectly force the people or the influence the people to purchase that particular type of goods or the hiring is concerned and that's for very very important concern now uh, as i said there are different type of methods of advertisement it may be any audio or uh, it may be by visual publicity also Uh, it may be by making representation of uh, a say a pictorial representation or diagrammatic representation also or it may be anything also or it may be by way of endorsement or the pronouncement may means of the or it may be by endorsement also or pronouncement by means it may be by use of the light sometimes in the advertisement the uh, light, the light is so powerful or the sound is so powerful or uh, th- that influence the people to uh, purchase that particular uh, to uh, goods is concerned either may be means of light it may be by way of a uh, light sound smoke or gas even the print and electronic media also in the print materials in the newspaper you see that you would find uh, advertisement uh, canvassing the utility of the product concerned and also by electronic we all know it very well in the television social media so all type of advertisements are made in with the view to influence the public public at large is concerned ultimate purpose uh, purpose of the advertisement is to influence the people to uh, attract more and more consu- to attract the more consumers towards their goods and services concerned now notice that you get uh, through your newspapers and all or it may be by circulars again circulation or no, circular may be official circular or otherwise also even that they may all the door delivery by through door, door delivery they come and circulate the uh, ad- advertisement to the people concerned or it may be it may be by way of wrapper also invoice or such other documents also. so these are the various ways by which the advertisements are being made primarily for the purpose of um, say uh, promoting the sale of the goods or hiring of the service concern now we move into another important advertisement which is, uh, which is very very important to about the uh, consumer protection is concerned it's a laboratory it means appropriate laboratory why this definition is important is uh, one should understand because we we in the consumer goods sorry consumer protection covers goods and services whenever any objection is taken about the quality of the goods purchased then the other party will also is likely to say that no argue that the goods sold is perfectly uh, uh, all right and it is in good condition so therefore there is a basically a, a difference or dispute between the purchaser and the seller so sometimes you know it may be difficult to measure or assess the quality of goods without sending to laboratory for testing therefore sometimes testing is very very essential to determine 
whether there was any defect in the goat salt uh, that is that, that's very very important so for example you know um, we purchase several items you know even oil or even uh, g- groceries or all type of items we purchase so when we let us take about honey so no, honey is most of the goods are subject to adulterant by the similar uh, similar items also adulterant you know uh, it's is one of the is integral system of our say uh, business uh, transactions concerned so honey very often the question is raised whether the honey is sold in the market by some of the sellers really it's a genuine one whether it's a pure whether it contains the purity as per the standards and also therefore if some objection is raised about the quality of the honey is concerned definitely this cannot be decided by the consumer courts by themselves so this honey the sample of the honey has be sent to the laboratory so therefore then the laboratory will give the certification or the iso one assessment whether uh, the um, honey the sample sent contains all the prescribed standards and uh, qualities prescribed by the regulatory authority and also therefore laboratory testing is very very important therefore the laboratory upper the laboratory should be again if it is given to the private hands that they may not they may take the money and they give the different type of reports also therefore the identify the laboratory is very very important that was the appropriate laboratory definition is very important so lab, the appropriate laboratory refers to a laboratory or organization recognized by central government or state government so number first criteria should be the laboratory should be recognized by the central government or the state government or if this is not so then other category or it must have been established by or under the law be either maintained by the central government or the state government or financed by the central government or state government or aided by the central government or the state government so any one of the requirements uh, uh, need to be fulfilled and then the fourth requirement then labor should be for carrying out analysis of test of any goods the purpose of the laboratory is primarily to carry out the analysis of the test of the any goods uh, uh, brought to its uh, say, uh, notice only and and also the laboratory's uh, say, job is Uh, to uh, analyze the goods with the view to determine whether such goods suffer from any defect uh, as claimed by the purchaser is concerned so therefore appropriate laboratory, laboratory when we refer to it again uh, this has to be recognized central government or the state government or estimated under law maintained to finance or aided by central government or state government if these requirements are fulfilled then there will be the, the that laboratory the goods will be sent to such laboratories concerned the next important definition is the complainant that once we a person purchase the goods or the services if there is a defect in the goods purchased or deficiency service i had then there is a then the next way is to make a complaint and that the, the person who then the who should make the complaint is the complainant the person who makes the complaint is the complainant who all can make the complaint that's a complainant means the person who can make the complaint is called the complainant now who are the persons are covered under the law to make the complaint number one a consumer as we have definite we had a separate we um, say lecture on consumer you can see to that so however consumer is the person who buys the goods or i the service for a consideration or early voluntary consumer registered registered only any voluntary consumer association registered or the central government uh, any any case central government or state can because they have the sovereign duty towards the consumers if the government comes to the conclusion that or uh, notices that the uh, product sold is not fit for the human consumption central government can also file a complaint before the consumer quorum so also the state government and the consumer protection act 2019 created an authority called central consumer protection authority whose primary job is to carry out this type of investigation uh, investigation so therefore the central consumer protection authority created in the consumer protection act also file a com- become a complaint and then one or more consumers having the same interest you know as i said no depositors may become a, a same group or other things are concerned there a group of consumers having the same or similar interest then the legal heir or the legal of the legal of the person who purchased the goods or hire the services in the case of the death of the consumer so that legal heir 
because you know after the death of the person who possesses the goods that the, the family member that the legal heir should uh, uh, should be uh, taken into the uh, case and he, he will get the benefit ultimately then in the case suppose suppose the minor purchase the goods so sometimes the school children they need lot of things for purchasing for their educational purpose and all nowadays sometimes when up to 10th standard or 9th standard they are the minors they can also purchase the goods and all suppose in such a case the minor purchase the goods then in that case minor cannot uh, say file a case before the law but the parent or legal guardian of a minor who purchased the goods the, or hired the services he, then they can also file a complaint before the consumer court so these are the complaint and consumer voluntary as registered voluntary association central government or central uh, state government or the central authority or more, uh, consumer uh, uh, more than one consumers having same interest legal heir or the pair legal guardian of the minor is concerned these are the persons who can file the complaint before the consumer forum is concerned now the ninth, then i talked of the complaint the person the who, who go, purchase the defective goods or hire the deficient service he should file a make a complaint now what should be the contents of the complaint is equally important so therefore the complaint should be uh, say uh, it should pertain to making any allegations and the allegations in writing first of all the allegation should be in writing not oral then it may be made by the complainant that we have in the previous discussion all those kind and what for the complaint should be for obtaining any relief as provided under the act is concerned the, the complaint should be should be meant, meant for claiming relief or damages uh, from the, uh, the seller or the service provider is concerned now in that thereafter what should be the nature of the complaints is concerned that is also equally important you cannot to write stories in the complaint the the only the essential thing alone should be put into that uh, complaint now what are the essential input to be uh, say, uh, made in the complaint sir number 1 the complaint should contain or include that the uh, the producer or the seller uh, or uh, the service provider they had an unfair contract or unfair trade practice or restitute their practice adopted by the trader or the service provider so in essence the person who purchases the goods or hire the services they must make a complaint making a allegation that the trader or the service provider adopted unfair contract or unfair trade practice or restitute trade practice i think we have the definition we, uh, we have the definition of unfair contract unfair contract no that is where uh, the person one person to the contract forces the another person Uh, to agree for certain i'm um, say terms and conditions that's what the unfair contract is concerned if we have a separate definition then i will discuss about it then what type of the uh, another complaint nature of complaint should be the goods bought or agreed to be bought suffer from one or more defects now about the what is the defect noticed by the consumer should be clearly spelled out in the complaint is concerned suppose if it is about a uh, car or a safe for sale this car now the what is the suppose if the coloring is not uh, as per the uh, promised uh, color one that may be a choice or that the color is not uh, uh, very very um, uh, perfect or it's, it's not uh, giving the good uh, say uh, attraction or it may be the tires and wheels or the parts may be damaged would have been put into that in the some of the lectures we discussed about the that the old cars are sold as a new cars definitely it comes the defective uh, defects in the car only or even in some of like i told about the the car which consumes excessive say petrol or diesel that also becomes a part of the defect in the car sold is concerned so this may be of anything and then the services hired or availed of or agreed to be hired suffer from any deficiency where the we have the services include banking financing insurance postal services and uh, electronic media all those we, we have a separate definition we can see there also now the services avoid i had from some deficiency suppose let us say the bank uh, now we have the uh, balance in the, our account but when we if you put a atm card it says that no no, no balance and all but you know despite uh, my mistake committed by the bank's concern so if the bank refuses to make the payment or release the payment despite having sufficient money in our balance definitely it will amount a deficiency in services concerned with related to the banking is concerned like insurance policy the insurance policy matured but the insurance company is not uh, releasing the uh, payment timely or they are say, saying that they say that the, the few more uh, dues are left uh, so therefore there is a deficiency in service 
So these are the, which will be verified based on the facts and all. So this is about the services. So to complain, complaint should contain that either any unfair trade, unfair contract, or unfair trade practice, or unfair practice ordered by the trader or trader, or the goods bought or agreed to bought suffer many more defects, and the services available to the suffer from any deficiency. Now, or the trader or service provider charged for goods services. A price in excess price fixed about excessive charging the price can also be the ground for making the complaint. The goods hazardous to life and safety when used are being offered for sale up to the public. Hazardous goods are sold to the public, which is prohibited under the law. The service is hazardous to life and safety of the public are being offered by service provider who knows it to be injurious to life and liberty. Hazardous to service involves about no faulty electric connection uh, given or where it on the village side in the no uh, because in a view to say uh, restrict the animals entering the field they sometimes give the faulty wires and all with the result some of the human beings also they while crossing the say, field without knowing the say, electric current and all they die, died also die also so this have hazardous uh, services also come into play or a claim for product liability action lies against the product manufacturer or product seller or the product service provider. So suppose any liability action, the again consumer protection now made a provision for the li product liability action against the producer, manufacturer, uh, product seller and product service provider. So that type of complaint can also be made. So these are about the nature of complaints to be made. Then consumer again, we have already recorded a video on who is a consumer. Please refer that video for the difference of consumer's concern. The next important one is consumer dispute. Again, consumer dispute. Well, what is the meaning of the what refers to consumer dispute? It refers to a dispute where a person against whom a complaint complaint has been made, either he denies or disputes the allegation contained in the complaint. Now we talked about the complaint. We talked about the who can make a complaint. Now the complaint has been made. Now the seller or the, the producer or the manufacturer or the distributor or the service provider, if they completely deny the allegations made or they dispute that the allegations are even partly or fully, even if the part, uh, the, if they refuse the partly, if it is accepted, partly it is uh, denied also, then not uh, it will become the uh, say, uh, dispute only. So dispute, uh, the, uh, there are certain prerequisites for uh, uh, for a, for a issue to become a dispute. First of all, as per the procedure for the consumer protection law, the person who bought the goods or had the service, he or she should make a formal request to the, the trader or the service provider with a request to give the, the record remedy. It may be by the return of the money, it may be the replacement of the goods, or it may be hiring of the services free of cost, it may be anything. And based on this claim made, relief out. If the trader or the service provider, if they come ready, willingly and ready to compensate the, the purchaser or the service hirer, then there is no dispute at all. The dispute will come, the consumer dispute only when complaint is made and the other party either denies or disputes the allegation, then only it will become a dispute, otherwise it will not become a dispute at all. Then again the consumer right is there, again we have recorded a video on the con uh, consumer rights, please refer to the video for further debate about this. Then the next important the defect in the goods we discussed about length, defect in the goods, deficiency in service. These are the two common phenomena in the consumer protection after and then. What is defect refers to? The term defect refers to any fault in the goods purchased or imperfection in the goods purchased or shortcomings in the quality, quantity, potency, purity or standard which is required to be maintained by or under the law for the time being in force or under any contract either by express or implied uh, connotation. Uh, or in addition to this, the defect may also include as claimed by the, uh, the trader in the manner whatsoever in any goods or the product is concerned. So this is what the defect means. So let us come to what with the faulty goods. Yeah, yeah, the producer, the seller or the manufacturer that may sell the goods that is in a good condition, but the product is faulty, means that there is some defect, means concern, there is a shortcoming in this concern, no, uh, then it will become the defect only. Shortcomings in the, as I said, talked about the denting in the car 
or there is some damage caused to the property at the time of sale itself these are the defects in the uh, vehicle and all and the quality also the quality of the color also even the quality of the tire or in the, the based on the prescription the quantity uh, refers to the um, this like the commodities only uh, so very often underselling is one of the common feature notes in the uh, um, in the trading uh, say um, concerns concern sometimes they say that it's 1 kg but if you measure it it may be less than 1 kg also it may be the 1000 ml but if you measure it it may be less than 1000 ml so if there is a, a, a decrease in the quantity uh, then the quantity prescribed pre- pre- say print the label or otherwise also it can become the uh, defect also it may come under the category of defect also potency it's also that in the the power of the commodity that no if it is not potency it is not reaching the potency as uh, provide uh, provide the regulatory authorities similarly of the purity of the i talked about the uh, purity of the honey or purity of the any medicine medicinal if they are pure impure uh, impure goods are also furious goods are also sold in the name of it's a pure, pure pure goods and also these all things will become the defect in the goods substandard substandard quality goods sold or the substandard quality mean the the standards are preceded by the regulatory authorities if those standards are pre- maintained not maintained then it will also become a substandard commodity sold then it can also come under the category of the defect and these are the some of the requirements of the defect in the goods in short defect the prescription of the goods as per the goods sold is not as per the prescription promised to the buyer then anything for fall short of the prescription or assurance made by the seller producer or the distributor then it will come under the category of defect is concerned the next one is again the deficiency definition again analogous to defect only again same deficiency refer to the services defect is for the commodity that's the only thing to remember i said about the goods in the physical in nature which you can so all uh, foods Go, f- fruits vegetables all those things come under the category of good services as i told about the we have the next slide also uh, service we see that and uh, again fault imperfect shortcoming the quality will not find the quantity here there the, uh, we had the quantity there then nature and the manner of performance so even uh, this may be you no know, you we go for the mobile site you know they say 1g 2g 3g and all they said no but when you purchase it when you go for such a offer and all but in reality they are not giving very good speed you are not getting the you are unable to uh, say download the service what you can do because they promise certain uh, speed of uh, performance but that uh, is not make uh, maintaining that required level of performance so that also become the deficiency maintained or undertaken to perform with any person and a contract so this is about the in short deficiency refers to the services and the defect refers to the goods is concerned now e-commerce is very very important e-commerce refers to buying or selling of goods or services including digital products over digital or electronic network that is the e-commerce is now very very common e-commerce may be related to a business the e-commerce may refers to the business to consumer or it may be a business to um, Uh, business it may be business to consu- consumer to consumer it may be consumer to business say for example no business to consumer any consumer uh, uh, any businessman trying to sell the goods to electronically uh, that will be say sometimes this is an online purchase very very common everybody even for small things we place an order through online so on all online purchases through electronic network that comes under the category of the e-commerce Uh, so let us say uh, we purchase a uh, shoes by online ordering it we consumer uh, purchase place an order to the shoe uh, um, shopkeeper and so there is a online sell e-commerce transaction or you place the uh, shirts on or you place the digital clocks through online you place an order so these are the online purchases are covered under that that's a e-commerce is concerned e-commerce is concerned that is the the purchases through business to commerce then the consumer to consumer con- then consumer to business and the business to consumer this type of categories are there then electronic uh, service provider again we talked about the electronic service from the person uh, who sells who provides services through electronic networking so electronic service provider refers to a person who provides technologies or processes to enable a product seller to engage in advertising or selling goods or services to a consumer 
and the any includes any online marketplace or online uh, auction sites and also service provider referred about you know, the person uh, through uh, providing service through electronically through online network then he is called the electronic service provider this is about his concern now uh, we come to the manufacturer again when we refer to the goods it's a manufacturer refers to a person who makes the goods either fully or partly there are also parts or or if uh, or if he makes assembled assembles any goods or parts there are is also coming under different manufacturer or he puts or causes to put his work mark or any goods made by the other person then is to come in the definition the manufacturer concern the misleading advertisement it's very very important definition misleading advertisement is making the people full of uh, making the people to understand a thing which is not true as a true that's what misleading advertisement that's a new definition misleading advertisement in relation to any product or service means an advertisement we have seen advertisement already which falsely describes such product or service false description of the product or service or gives a false guarantee or likely to mislead the consumers as to the nature substance quantity or quality of the product or service and conveys an express or implied representation which if made by the manufacturer or the seller or the service provider thereof would constitute an unfair trade practice if they make an a promise or a representation which comes under the category unfair trade practice then also it will lead a misleading advertisement then deliberately conceal the important information you know the say for example if there was some advertisement no if you the complaint may made a say advertisement if you take Uh, taking two glass of water is equal to one one glass of complaint complaint and all. So this was challenged before the court of law. This definitely leads to misleading advertisement. See the competitor, you can promote your own product, but you have no right to under say the degrade the commodity of your competitors. Therefore, you cannot make such type of uh, comparison between which is untrue. So this type of is referred to the misleading advertisement. then the product manufacturer product manufacturer refers to a person who makes any product or parts thereof or assemble parts or uh, made by others or this is a product manufacturer and the manufacturer there's little difference here the product refers of the particular product concern that's a general definition only we are running short of time again product seller product seller in relation to a product refers to a person who in course of business either imports sells uh, this is important seller is a person who imports the goods or sells the goods or distributes or leases or installs or prepares or even packaging done is also coming in the product seller labels markets repairs maintains or otherwise is involved in placing product for a commercial purpose so product seller these people engage in the importing sale distribution lease in preparation of packages labels they all come under the product seller restitute trade practice again refers to a trade practice which tends to bring about manipulation of price or its conditions of delivery or to affect the flow of of supplies in market related to goods or services such a manner as to impose or to the, the consumers on just with cost or restrictions now we have couple of different that's what i was referring to service refers to service of any description which is made available to the potential use and includes banking is a service financing is a service insurance transport which include rail road air even the sh- by ship transportment they are covered the services processing of goods supply of electrical or other energy el- electricity is coming under this telecommunication comes under this boarding and lodging of your all those stuff so, hot- hotels hotel industry is covered under this house construction is covered under this then entertainment amusement and the newspapers and other information media services multi multimedia media social service all these things are covered under this so service is a wider definition even the medical service covered under the uh, services as per the supreme court decision is concerned this is what about the unfair uh, contract unfair contract i referred in the first or two slides only and it refers to a contract between a manufacturer or a trader or service provider on the one hand and the consumer on the other and two having such terms which causes significant change in the rights of the consumer that is very very important the contract which changes the rights of the consumer adversely to the consumer that's a unfair contract concern unfair trade practice refers to trade practice which for the purpose of promoting the sale 
use of supply of goods or for the provisions of the service adopts any unfair method on for deceptive practice that comes it's a very lengthy definition so with this uh, discussion on unfair trade practice we have completed our discussion on this important definition provided the consumer protection act 2019 is concerned i said there are 47 definitions and the 23 definitions and new definitions but apart from what we discussed today please refer to the study material either print copy or from our portal with this thank you each one of you thank you very much please